Hypopituitarism and Hormone Replacement Hypopituitarism denotes an insufficiency of one or more of the pituitary hormones. Etiology and Pathophysiology Destruction and compression of normal pituitary tissue or reduction in the blood supply, including the hypothalamic pituitary portal circulation, accounts for the majority of cases. Causes of Hypopituitarism Common Pituitary slash peripituitary tumors or as a complication of treatment, including surgery and radiotherapy. Rare. Vascular, e.g. pituitary apoplexy, Sheehan syndrome, intracellular carotid artery aneurysm. Pituitary infiltration, e.g. metastasis, hemochromatosis, sarcoidosis, histiocytosis, Wegener's granulomatosis. Infection, e.g. tuberculosis, pituitary abscess. Autoimmune, lymphocytic hypophysitis. Traumatic, e.g. post-head injury. Congenital, e.g. isolated or combined pituitary hormone deficiencies. Idiopathic. NB. With pituitary tumors, the usual sequence in which pituitary hormone function is lost is. Growth hormone, GH. Lutinising hormone, LH and follicle-stimulating hormone, FSH. Adrenocorticotrophic hormone, ACTH. Thyroid-stimulating hormone, TSH. Incidence. The incidence in adults is 8 to 10 per million per year. Clinical presentation. This depends on the etiology, the degree of deficiency and the rapidity of onset. Examples are shown below. Chronic hypopituitarism, e.g. after pituitary radiotherapy, may present with general fatigue and lack of well-being, symptoms of hypogonadism, sexual dysfunction, loss of libido, oligomenorrhoea, or amenorrhea, and possibly symptoms of hypothyroidism and hypoadrenalism. GH deficiency may manifest as reduced exercise performance and quality of life. Pituitary apoplexy Physical signs The physical signs will generally be those of the primary hormone deficiency syndromes, e.g. hypogonadism, hypothyroidism. Secondary hypoadrenalism may result in postural hypotension and loss of secondary sexual hair, but as the etiology of the problem is pituitary hormone deficiency, it is not associated with hyperpigmentation. GH deficiency is associated with a reduction in lean body mass and an increase in fat mass, with an increased waist-to-hip ratio. Investigation Once hypopituitarism is suspected. Complete biochemical assessment of pituitary function. MRI, or CT, scan of the pituitary fossa. Formal testing of the patient's visual fields and acuity. Anterior pituitary function Growth hormone The gold standard investigation for possible GH deficiency is the insulin tolerance test, ITT. Random measurements of GH and serum insulin-like growth factor, IGF, one are not reliable means of diagnosing GH deficiency. The glucagon stimulation test and the arginine stimulation test provide alternative provocative tests especially in cases where the ITT is contraindicated. Gonadotrophins In women with regular menses, who are not on the combined oral contraceptive pill, further tests are probably not necessary. Otherwise, LH, FSH and estradiol concentrations should be measured. In men, testosterone concentration should be checked in conjunction with LH and FSH. Ideally blood samples should be taken at 9 am to exclude effects of diurnal variation. Adrenocorticotrophic hormone Although measurement of cortisol at 9 am may be informative, e.g. if the value is very low, random measurements of ACTH and cortisol should not be used to screen for ACTH deficiency.
Dynamic assessment of the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis with an ITT is the gold standard in this setting. However, in cases where the ITT is contraindicated, the short synacthan test, SST, can be used, providing that the results are interpreted with caution. For example, the SST may fail to identify incipient secondary adrenal failure in the first few weeks after transphenoidal surgery. If used, the SST should ideally be undertaken at 9 a.m., thereby allowing both the basal and postsynacthan cortisol values to be used in assessment of the axis. Thyroid Stimulating Hormone Measurement of thyroxine, ideally free thyroxine, with or without triiodothyronine, ideally free triiodothyronine. Levels provides the most reliable means of assessing thyroid status in patients with hypothalamic pituitary disease. TSH levels alone should not be used to screen for secondary slash tertiary hypothyroidism. Prolactin Deficiency of prolactin is not clinically evident, except postpartum when it is associated with a failure of lactation. Hyperprolactinemia is a more common finding in the setting of pituitary hormone deficiencies, reflecting stock compression by an intracellular mass or infiltration. Treatment Hydrocortisone NB It is important to avoid the adverse side effects of long-term treatment with superphysiological doses of glucocorticoids. For most patients, Hydrocortisone 20 mg daily is sufficient, divided into 10 mg on waking, 5 mg at lunchtime and 5 mg in the late afternoon, or 15 mg on waking and 5 mg in the late afternoon. The adequacy of replacement can be assessed with a cortisol day curve. Patients must be given written advice about doubling their hydrocortisone dose if they are ill and seeking medical help for parenteral therapy if they are unable to take their tablets. They should be given a steroid card and advised to purchase a MedicAlert bracelet. Thyroxine The thyroxine dose should be titrated to the free thyroxine concentration, not the TSH level. NB Hydrocortisone replacement therapy, if indicated must be instituted before thyroxine in order to avoid the risk of precipitating a life-threatening hypoadrenal crisis. Sex Hormone Replacement Therapy Both men and women require sex steroid replacement therapy for normal sexual function, to prevent osteoporosis and to maintain body composition. Women should be given cyclical estrogen and progestogen, e.g. in the form of the combined oral contraceptive pill or lower dose hormone replacement therapy, HRT, especially if over the age of 35, until the time at which a natural menopause would be expected to occur, typically around 50 years. Fertility treatment requires ovulation induction with gonadotrophins. Testosterone can be effectively replaced using intramuscular injections, implants, topical gel slash patches or a buccal delivery system. Liver function tests and FBC, hematocrit, should be checked prior to and periodically after starting treatment. Men of an appropriate age should be counseled regarding the pros and cons of prostate surveillance, with periodic digital rectal examination and measurement of serum prostate-specific antigen. In men with oligospermia slash azoospermia who desire fertility, Induction of spermatogenesis with gonadotrophin therapy may be necessary. Restoration of normal serum testosterone levels may not be welcomed by long-term hypogonadal males, or their partners. In these circumstances, or if testosterone replacement is contraindicated for other reasons, e.g. in men with prostate carcinoma, consider alternative bone prophylaxis, e.g. with a bisphosphonate. Growth Hormone GH replacement therapy is relatively expensive and its use in the UK is currently subject to National Institute for Health and Clinical Excellence, NICE, guidelines. 
Recombinant human GH is self-administered by subcutaneous injection once a day. The dose is titrated to IGF-1 levels, against the age and gender-related reference range. Treatment may increase the patient's lean body mass, bone mineral density, exercise capacity and quality of life, and improve lipid profile and insulin sensitivity. The most common side effects of treatment are edema and arthralgia, which respond to a reduction in dose. There is no evidence to suggest an increase in the risk of new tumor formation or recurrence of a previously treated pituitary tumor in patients receiving GH therapy. Prognosis Hypopituitarism is often associated with reduced psychological well-being and affected subjects have a mortality rate at least twice the standardized mortality rate. Both may be related to periods of untreated hypogonadism, excessive glucocorticoid or thyroxine therapy, or inadequate glucocorticoid treatment in times of stress or GH deficiency.